so this is a update on where we are um, before we made some mechanical components and uh, we're waiting on the electronic parts and the electronic parts that I ordered still haven't come in and uh, it's mostly the uh, the position sensor, the magnetic part. These are the what I decided to do was to go with this curious scientist this AS5600 is his um, YouTube this is his name here but if you look up this you can see his YouTube channel and uh, he explains what it is he's doing and then you go to his uh, he has a parts list so what I did was I ordered the parts on his list, which amounts to a breadboard, the uh, Nano, Uno Nano, this little, um, this little shield. Uh, OLED, OLED screen, I guess you would call it. Then this is the part, the actual magnetic encoder part that I'm waiting on. Now this thing is uh, approximately uh, a little over three quarter, 0.790 square, and it's got the the chip and I don't know what these things are and place you can mount your wires and but if you go on eBay and these other places I've actually ordered another one on eBay because this one I ordered from Ally Express and they said it would take like two months to get here and I didn't realize it when I ordered it that it would take I didn't notice the shipping date so I ordered it on eBay from someplace in China and they said it would take about 30 days. And I think it's already been about 30 days. But anyway. Um, so. We order some parts from a place called DigiKey. It's an electronic store. And. Uh, so I, I looked up. This part number this uh, magnetic encoder on their website and they carry it. So I said, oh, that's good. You know, and uh, if you go to this uh, this YouTube channel, you can pull up the data sheet on this and it gives you I don't know, there's like eight pages of stuff. A lot of le electronic stuff. All the stuff that it does and different things here and there and what have you. And, and on this page here, it says, uh, actually it's on several of their pages, that you should use a... Uh, A 100 NF between the 5 volts and the ground. And you should use a 1, I don't know what that symbol is, like a, a Q with the top of it cut off. QF, captivator. 
you should use that between the the three volts and the ground so anyway they had this uh they have these in stock so I ordered some I ordered three of them now in the picture the data sheet this is what it looks like this is the the, the chip and the leads coming out and I said okay well you know it's it's the right number and they're only like three bucks a piece so I ordered that I ordered some magnets I ordered some magnets from the other place too so I ordered, I ordered uh, four magnets from here and three of these things <laughs> and uh, you know I expected this thing to come in two or three days later four days later and then I, I look at their they sent me an email saying it's in process and, it, and it, it takes like four days to in process it and then they ship it so nevertheless I had to wait and I finally got it in okay I got this package this big box about the size of piece of paper and had all this wrapping in it and uh, they're looking through the box and I got the magnets and then they had this little baggie with with this thing in it and I says I said that's not what I ordered You know, it's supposed to it's supposed to look like this. That doesn't look like that. So then I uh, I looked at it closer, and if you flip it over, got little chips in it. There's actually three of these chips inside of here. There's two left. I took one out. And I said, oh boy. So anyway, I thought, well, I got it here and I don't have the other parts. So let's try to make it work. So what are these... Uh, in the meantime, I ordered these uh, these uh, NF things and this UF thing, and I got these on eBay, and they're like dirt cheap. I mean, you get like 20 of them for like 3 bucks or something. So I ordered this, uh, the 50 volt 100 one NF, and I got the 50 volt 1 UF. So anyway, what they that they look like is these uh, these little things here. So anyway, so so this is a rig I I made. To uh, I see on the uh, YouTube where different people have all these crazy contraptions about how to check the you know to make it rotate. So what I do is I made this. This is the part where my magnet rotates. The magnet inside of there there's a piece of tape holding it in place and that chip thing is right in there so I had to give it to the guys at the e-shop because they got a little um, microscope where they do soldering 
for real fine parts which is exactly what this thing is it's like really fine I the side of the little leads on that guy and I don't think I could have done it so I threw him a half a dozen donuts and they were happy and I was happy so everybody was happy so I made this block the piece fits in this block and you can't see it now but there's a, a vertical line on it right here I took a engraving tool and I just uh, engraved a, a vertical line on there and inside of here there's a cutout the same width as this part so I could slide it back and forth and then I used the vertical mark to line it up in the center because what I did was I I have a a quarter inch hole in the back and I was going to put a dowel pin in there and I decided not to you know because I think all these crazy ways I can mount this thing and uh, I said well I'll just put a piece of tape on it you know I put a groove in there a slot and put a piece of tape on it just to hold it in place because it's only for a test you know it's just a little test bed now this rubber band is on here not to hold the part but to keep from sliding on the bench because this uh, aluminum channel will slide slide around so the rubber band adds friction to it to keep it from sliding around so I made it adjustable slides back and forth so you can set the gap for the magnet then you just tighten that and it locks it in place it's just something to test this just see if it worked. I don't even know if it worked. So the guys at the e-shop, like I said, they uh, they soldered these wires on for me. So they put an orange on the five volt. They put a violet on the three volt. And they put a brown on the ground. They put a blue on the SCL and a green on the SDA. And the blue happens to go to A4 on the Uno Nano. And the green goes to... Well, I mean A5, and then the blue, the green goes to A4 on the uh, Nano, Uno Nano. Now, see, I, I wasn't sure how to wire this thing up, so I ordered the parts like this guy Curious Scientist did, and I did exactly what he did, as in placing the components where they should go because the um, the wiring diagram that it shows I mean it, um, it it doesn't look like a typical wire diagram wiring diagram but anyway actually all the wires do go where they're supposed to go as far as the a4 and A5 and the, the positive and the ground. See, here's the green one. There's the blue one. The red one, the black one. And as far as this guy goes, the blue one and the green one. And the only thing is he doesn't show these two, those uh, captivator things, the 100 NF and the 1 NF. Because I think what happens is that when you buy it with this card on it, it has these components already built in. I don't know what these parts are, but I think they're so you don't need these two parts. And 
you know, waiting for mine to still to come in. But since it's not here, I thought, well, I'll try this uh, one from uh, Digikey. I already got half a dozen donuts in it already. But anyway, um, we got the wires coming out, and it's just basically a temporary job. I got alligator clips on them. So the the green one. Let me find my list. The green one goes to on the far side. Goes to A4, which is this one. This is orange wire on the left side, A4. Then the brown one is A5. So this orange one goes to here, which goes to here. Then the uh, the blue one. goes to A5, which is this white wire here. So that would be this brown one here. The brown one here is A5. That one's A4. So the brown one goes to this other brown one, which goes there. Now this is a, uh, I'm going to write this down and get this a little figured out better, but you know, it's just something I, I threw together just to see if this works. So we got to figure out what this one is. This is the, this is the orange one, which is, the, now see the positive goes to that thing right here and it also goes to this red one here Kind of keep these separated a little bit. We don't need them touching each other. So the the violet one is the three volt, which goes to that little yellow. And you see it right here. And then that goes to ground. This is my ground back here. 
then the brown which is this one now this wire size I don't know I think that's like 28 it's pretty small so this is the the ground and it goes to there grounds out all those so this magnet they said it's supposed to be uh, 0.5 to 3 millimeter space which works out to 20 thousandths to 118 so what I did was I uh, I was looking for something the right size so this wire or these jumper cables yeah I ordered these jumper cables along with all the other stuff I mean I don't normally use this stuff but I ordered at least so I could run it on the breadboard and I don't normally use a breadboard but like I said it uh, I didn't know how to wire this thing so I needed to wire it exactly as he showed it so I could understand what was going on but anyway this wire happens to be what I say that was it was uh, I measured that before it was like sixty thousandths or something Uh, 53 so that's somewhere somewhere in the middle so let me put you up here So this wire was uh, 53, so that's about, about somewhere in the middle of the gap. So I just put it in there, and when it touches both sides, I just snug that down just a little bit. Okay, there's something else that uh, when I first um, plugged this board in, because what I was doing was I was making sure the display works. So you can go into different programs and just run the display. You don't have to run the program. So I was in the, in the uh, Arduino main thing. They have uh, examples. And then you can go in... And you can run uh, different programs just to see how the display works. You know, I just wanted to make sure that the display was working with the controller. And when I went to first hook this up into the Arduino program, it didn't recognize it. So I searched YouTube, and then I then they were talking about you had to load drivers into your Arduino program to um, recognize this little uh, nano thing and then I remembered that I had to do that with the original Arduino I had to go in and load uh, I think there were 304 drivers or something so anyway I looked in YouTube and they, they mentioned the same thing you had to load drivers into it for your computer to recognize it and that went really quick uh, you could just go to some website, you download the files, and then uh, it it, uh, it activates the computer to recognize this um, nano. So that worked out really well. 
I just want you to be aware of that is if you go to use this that your computer might not recognize it because it doesn't have the drivers for it but it's real easy real easy to find and real easy to download and it uh, it works pretty good so then I went into the examples program and um, I tried to make the screen work and I didn't have any trouble it just it just came right up so I mean everything worked just as the uh, the guy said it would and there were some other uh, things going on that we'll have to talk about some other time and the uh, majority of it is the 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 display now see what I didn't like now originally you know I talked about you know this guy curious scientist this is the one we're using now I talked about this atomic 14 now I really like his screen he's got nice a big screen and he's got big letters now if you, you watch the the video on this guy he's got um, really small letters and uh, if you look at the screen the screen you got one line up here and then you got another line down here and it's really hard to see it and what I wanted was I wanted the numbers to come up and be as big as they can be and I didn't want two lines I only wanted one line and so I had to go in and I had to modify the code and I had to do some other stuff and we'll have to talk about that later but anyway I got it I got it the way I wanted it so I'm real happy about that and the other thing is that that after you load the, the program into the into the nano it won't do anything because if you if you look at the program when it goes through it he talks about the program he, he talks about how the if the magnet isn't in the proper space the spacing of the magnet the chip doesn't recognize the magnet the program won't run so the program just stops so that's something you got to be aware of too is that the the spacing of the magnet has to be if the magnet is not recognized by the uh, the, the chip then the program won't run is what I'm trying to say so anyway I'm going to turn this uh, this computer on. I'm using this computer for uh, power for this guy because I can't go I can't go into my other computer I use in the living room because I have to drag all this crap in there and I don't want to do that So anyway, the computer is up. So we're going to rotate the magnet. See, it's not doing anything. So we're going to rotate the magnet. I don't see where I have the ground connected. Where's the ground? Brown. Brown. Here's the brown. I got the positive connected and not the ground.
Oh, there's the reason why. Because the ground isn't connected. And that would be this white one right here. That goes there. Yeah, I don't really care for this this mess but you know if it uh, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and fit it in my little um, switch box break box we're gonna bring this back to about 3 8 And it's, it's picking it up, but it's a little funny. We'll bring that to quarter. Back to quarter. Yeah, it's pretty stable there. Now we're back to pretty much the original spot. Yeah, we're about, I don't know, 60, 80 thousands. Hey, if you don't look past that decimal point, everything looks pretty good. So anyway, that's cool. All right, we'll see about getting this thing look a little better. All right, bye.